Hey guys, welcome to my Animal Adventures YouTube channel. And if you've been watching my last couple of videos, you know I sold quite a few snakes at the reptile show here in Colorado. And in this video, I want to talk to you about what you can expect from your new ball python, how to take care of it. And if you bought it from me, some of the background when it last ate. And a lot of people at the show actually came up to me and asked, you know, when does this ball python eat? And actually they bought it, they left my table, and later they actually came back and started asking these questions. I'm gonna cover those questions in this video. Okay, so here was a question that was posted in the comments section under one of my last videos. And it said, I actually looked at one of your ball pythons. I wanted to buy it, couldn't make up my mind. And by the time I actually made up my mind to buy that ball python, I came back and the reptile show was closed. How can I buy your ball python? And I usually don't sell them out of my house. I actually don't ship them out. So I only really sell at the local reptile shows here in Colorado. And it seems like seems like that's where I really like to I really like to vent at the shows. I like to meet the people. You know, if I sold on the internet or sold at my house here, I would run out of ball pythons and I have nothing to sell at the show. So that's kind of why I'm just selling at the shows. I kind of want to keep it small. I don't really want to expand to a really large operation where I'm shipping a lot of snakes. So if, if you missed the ball python at the last show and you want to buy it, actually in two weeks. Just two weeks, there's another show, and that is Repticon, March 9th and 10th at the Arapahoe County Fairgrounds, and I hope to see you there. Okay, so the probably the number one question that I had, every time I sold the ball python, people were coming back, and they were like, what does this ball python eat, and when has it last eaten? And actually, my very first reptile show, I was feeding all my snakes just a couple days before the show, and the problem is, is they all start going to the bathroom in the display cases, and I was chasing around the dirty little display cases that I had all the, the ball pythons in, and it was it was pretty messy and then the second show what I actually did is I fed the week before so actually when I sold the snakes it was a whole week before I actually fed any of them and my display cases were completely clean and free and clean the whole weekend I didn't have any make a mess as a matter of fact I've been doing that show after show after show feed the week before and I haven't had any problems with the snakes actually going to the bathroom and the display cases so if you buy a snake for me you know it is eaten the week before and it actually is ready to feed and the, the question is well what does my ball python eat and I would say it really depends on the size and let me show you like a typical size of a ball python I'll just pull one out of my tub here this is kind of the stuff I was selling at the show and for a, for a ball python, I would say this big, <laughs> this is actually, I could probably only move, I'll almost move this up into a bigger tub, but I was actually feeding ball pythons this big, uh, either rats or mice, frozen thawed or live, basically whatever I had. And I would actually recommend something that's as big or a little bit smaller than the thickest part of the body. So, so this part right here, and I would say... For a, for a ball python like this, this would probably be an adult mouse. And I would, actually I would recommend frozen thawed on um, something like this. You can also feed, I was actually feeding a lot of these uh, live rat pups. You can do frozen thawed rat pups, the, the ones that are about as big as that around as this. It's actually better to get them on rats because what happens is, is if you, if you keep them on mice, then eventually they'll get really big and then they'll only eat mice and as a really big snake you really can't put the weight on that they need because they, they really need a bigger meal. And bull pythons are really finicky eaters so if you can get them to eat one or two mice in a sitting they're pretty much done and they won't eat again versus if you feed them one big rat that's the same weight is like 10 or 15 mice when they get bigger it's a lot better for the snake and I have some snakes that are mousers will only eat mice and trying to get them <laughs> trying to get them on anything else is next to impossible and I just can't get the weight on those snakes so at this stage I would say at this stage right here they will eat anything mice or rats frozen thawed or live and with a frozen thawed you, you definitely want to make sure that you thaw them out to room temperature and warm them up to about 100 degrees before you actually feed them. You want to make sure that they're thawed all the way through that they don't have a, a cold inner core because that can actually hurt your snake if you're doing frozen thawed. You want to make sure that it's warm all the way through. And then I would say for a smaller snake, I have some smaller ones here. And I have some that, <laughs> take a look at this, 
I have a really small ball python so so I have these that weren't at the show these little tiny albinos I was actually assist feeding these guys look at how cute and tiny this little guy is and this is almost the size of a brand new hatchling right out of the egg and this one was really slow and lagging behind it was it was that's why I didn't show it and sell it at the shows because this is not ready to sell it's too small as a matter of fact I've had some people in the comments section say hey I just bought this ball python from a different breeder and I'm having problems feeding it and most likely what happens is is most people will hatch out a snake they usually hatch out with this big and then they say well I'm going to feed it three meals and then I'm going to sell it and the problem is after three meals they're really not ready to be sold what you really need well personally I actually feed them six meals by the time they eat six or seven meals then they actually can transition over to like a frozen thawed mouse or a rat and, and actually the very first meals that you feed a ball python are live mice it's the only thing they will eat and I know a lot of people are against live and it really comes down to the breeders it's the responsibility of the breeder to get this snake to eat and I let me tell you I've tried almost everything the only thing they will eat is live mice and this one actually eats little tiny <laughs> little tiny mice the eyes are just barely open and it's like a just has basically just enough fur on the mouse just almost like a, a mouse crawler I would call it even before the hopper stage I was feeding this guy he's probably big enough now almost to get to the hopper stage but this is a really unusual case usually they start with hoppers or small hoppers and I had a guy in the comment section says I'm, I'm just ready to sell this ball python because I can't feed it I can't figure out to feed it and it's been weeks and weeks and weeks brand new ball python can't get it to eat bought it from someone else and I said hey try a live mouse and sure enough the live mouse worked and that ball python ate and let me tell you if you figure that out it can really it can really be uh, it's, it's like it's like you know you're all of a sudden you're enlightened you know figuring out what these things eat at the very beginning and I've tried a lot of different things and that's only thing that they will eat so once you get a ball python that is like this big <laughs> a really big ball python like this this should be on small rats and essentially it's it's a rat about the big the width of the biggest part of the snake about this big and I tend to go a little bit smaller on most of my snakes I really don't push them to where they're eating really big rats and for, for, for a snake like this if you still had it on mice you would probably have to feed I'd say you know six or seven or eight mice to actually try to get this ball python to keep the weight on and, and let me tell you this snake will not eat that many rodents in a row if you get something like a reticulated python those things are garbage disposals and they'll eat anything you know back to back to back I can feed 10 rats all in a row to my big retics ball pythons let me tell you after two meals usually they're done and if you're feeding mice it's really not enough and that's one of the challenges of putting them and keeping them on mice versus feeding them rats so with that said I actually do pretty much switch back and forth between mice and rats and live and and frozen thawed and it really depends what I have on hand I breed a lot of my own rats so it depends what I have in my rack if I'm if I'm pairing up a lot and it's and for me it's really a balancing act so for example I sold 40 snakes at the show this last weekend and those snakes eat once a week so every week that's 40 rats and every other week every two weeks that's 80 so that's 160 rats every month that I was having to actually plan for and to produce in my in my rodent rack here or by frozen thought and if you think about it now I'm 160 rats shy of all that and I already have all my rats paired up and I'm breeding and I'm expecting that many babies and that's really one of the challenges is the supply and the demand of the rodents versus the snakes and keep in mind you never actually have too many rats where you don't know what to do with them and you actually have to you know just throw them away or whatever rats actually have value the pet stores will buy them from you and it's it's really not an issue to have too many it's sometimes it's an issue if you don't have enough for all your snakes okay so let's mention briefly the housing for the ball pythons there's a lot of different setups that you can actually have as far as what you put your ball python in for an enclosure 
And originally I started with aquariums like this. I actually have all my frogs in here, my Pac-Mans, and my pixie frog. And this is actually would be really good for a ball python actually is, is some of these aquariums I really like these that open up in the front they actually sell these at a lot of the reptile shows these are really awesome you can get in there and clean it without actually having to take it off of the rack and you know taking the top off and especially if you have a lot of stuff in there they can get real heavy so I really like where the opening the easy front opening of these where you can get in and just spot clean and what I would recommend especially for a ball python you'd probably want something bigger than this and you'd want to hide like a little um, something they can crawl in that's completely enclosed with just a hole on one side so they can kind of go in there and feel completely surrounded, completely secure. And what I would actually do for a ball python is I would put a heat mat underneath on one side, I have a hot side and a cool side, and on the hot side I'd hook the heat pad up to a thermostat and set it to 90 degrees. So what you really want is you want a 90 degree uh, side on a hot spot on one side. I would actually, if you only had one hide, I would definitely put it on the hot, hot side so they can actually digest their food. You definitely need a hot spot of around 90 degrees so a ball python can digest. And essentially what I went to is these rack systems over here. <laughs> There's a lot of, I have tons and tons and tons of rack systems for all my ball pythons. And what it actually is, is uh, uh, ball pythons are really secure in these. So this is essentially the whole hide uh, in that enclosure. So this acts as the hide. And really, to get them out of the hide, you really have to take them out and, <laughs> and kind of play with them and bring them out. This one doesn't like to say, he's kind of hissing at me, doesn't really want to come out. But uh, I would say, uh, typically, if you have them in a rack system, it's always good to kind of get them out and, and kind of play with them, maybe let them crawl around a little bit. And really, with my YouTube videos, <laughs> I do a lot of, you know, pulling my snakes out and showing them off, especially you know these white ones these white ones everybody loves a pure white snake it's, I think about 50 people actually picked this up at the show I actually had this one for sale not that I'd want to sell it but if I did sell it I could probably make another one because I have the parents and uh, I would say a rack system is ideal because this is it's got the hot side in the back it's got the cool side in the front it's got the water you definitely want water at all times with ball pythons or they can get dehydrated pretty fast and and usually what I use is a coconut husk chip substrate and I like to just take a little watering can and, and water just keep it a little bit damp I don't really like it really waterlogged you just want a little moisture enough so that they have a little humidity if it's too humid in here they can actually get respiratory tract infections so you don't want it too humid but you don't want it really bone dry and if you live in a really humid climate you may not even have to water the substrate it, it may just have enough humidity by itself but these racks are really awesome and and typically what you do is you know for a for a smaller ball python you know this size of a rack would be perfect or this size of a this size of a tub would be perfect for something small like this you know something about this size goes in what we call a hatchling rack this is an ARS hatchling rack and then what I do is I actually move them up to um, these these are this is what we call a grow out tub from ARS and typically you can put them in here and grow them out until they're a certain size I actually have some that are uh, almost ready to move I have this this desert ghost female this one is pretty much as big as you want in a tub like this in the grow out rack and then you want to move them over to something like this uh, where you have a bigger snake this is a 70 series rack and you can put big adult ball pythons in here they can pretty much live their entire life in a 70 series tub and then for my really big ball pythons I put them down here in these in these uh, uh, ARS 8018 tubs and this girl I keep looking if she's gonna lay eggs and she's getting pretty close she's getting really close I did an ultrasound and she is full of eggs 
So this is going to be the first one to lay and definitely, definitely want to keep it uh, humid. Um, so it's, the way I like it is a little bit dry on top with a little bit of humidity underneath. That's just about perfect. And when they're ready to lay eggs, they won't eat for months. <laughs> they won't go to the bathroom. They hardly even drink their water. It's like, it's literally like a pet rock here. <laughs> this snake is, you know, I've actually done nothing with this snake except open it every day to look to see if she's laid eggs. And then kind of sprinkle it with water during the breeding season. It's, it's so easy. You can go away for a week and come back and she'll be perfectly fine in there. It's, it's pretty incredible. But what I do is, you know, especially if you have a small, you know, aquarium size enclosure, keep in mind that that snake is going to get really big. And a lot of these aquariums, it will definitely outgrow. So if you're buying something like this, you know, in seven years, it can grow up to be that really big snake. So I would consider pretty much anything pretty much temporary. So what I would highly recommend, if you can, is to keep an ambient temperature in the low 80s. And actually in here, it's typically between 80 and 82 degrees is an ambient temperature. So the cold side is really about 80, and the hot side is close to 90. And that's really the temperature gradient that a ball python really needs. And if you live in a really cold house, say it's maybe in the 60s, you may consider maybe building or constructing a small space, like a closet or something, and keep your ball pythons in, and just heat that, maybe put a space heater, and then have it on some kind of a thermostat where you can just heat the closet to like 80 degrees. And that's kind of what I did here. It's, it's, this is not even 200 square feet. It's a really small room, and kind of in the middle of the house, really well insulated. And, and I pretty much just have this one room as my snake room. The rest of the house is quite a bit colder. And the other thing you can also do is you can have radiant heat panels from the top. And that's kind of what I have in my, with my reticulated python. It's really cold in the basement, and that's where she lives. She's on the pool table, but she has the big top radiant heat panel from above. She also has a heat from underneath. And that's the hot side from the top and the bottom. And then she has the cool side, which is quite a bit cooler. I'd say sometimes the cool side, well, since it's a complete enclosure, I would say it probably gets in the 70s, mid-70s on the cool side, even though the room is in the 60s. But if, you, if you're thinking about a ball python, what I would really do is, is for the cold side, I would consider an overhead heat lamp on... Um, they actually make the thermostats that will dim a heat lamp to control the temperature. And I'd probably consider something like that for a ball python if your house was really cold. So you can heat it from the top and keep one side in the, at least in the mid-70s, I would say, and the other side with a hot spot in the, probably about 90 degrees. And that's really, I'd say that's probably one of the biggest challenges uh, is keeping the temperature in your ball python enclosure at the at a consistent temperature for example if i came in here and something happened to to my uh my thermostat like if i unplugged it and the whole <laughs> the, the temperature of the room came down like in the mid to low 70s a lot of these ball pythons i would notice right away that they would all stop eating and it's almost the same thing with uh, the high temperature i actually had my my thermostat malfunction on my space heater and it got up in the it almost I think it was like 92 in here when I came in. It was really hot, and I, I realized my thermostat failed. And shortly after that, all my ball pythons went off of food for the next couple weeks. It's, it seems like they're really temperature sensitive to swings in temperatures. You really want to maintain constant temperatures as much as possible. Okay, so one of the biggest challenges and concerns as far as owning a ball python, take a look at this beauty. <laughs> this is my female hide that I bought years ago and she won't eat and won't eat and won't eat. I'd say she's been at least six months without a meal. As a matter of fact, ball pythons can go two years without eating anything and it's really disturbing and sometimes it'll drive you crazy and, and let me tell you, if they stop eating a lot of people, including myself, I am tempted to sell this ball python because it won't eat. And let me tell you, if this ball python, sometimes they'll just snap out of it and they'll start eating or you keep trying different things. Actually, the last meal that this one ate was a, a fresh killed African soft fur, <laughs> which I can't believe this thing actually finally ate something after months not eating. And I don't really breed soft furs anymore and I've tried everything. You know, this, this has been one of my pickiest eaters. And let me tell you, you really have to have patience 
with a ball python and I've never known a ball python to actually starve itself. What you really need to do is just keep offering food once a week and maybe switch up the food, try rats and mice. And, and another thing that was really disturbing that I heard someone at the show saying they said, oh yeah, I left, my, uh, left a rat in with my ball python for, for a whole day and it wouldn't eat it. <laughs> and let me tell you, if you put a rat in with your ball python, that is extremely dangerous for your ball python, especially if it doesn't eat it. And that rat is in there, that rat is hungry, and that rat can actually severely chew up your ball python. You definitely don't want to keep it in there, I would say for a maximum of five minutes. And if you're feeding big rats, I would not recommend feeding live if possible because a big rat, even if this, even if a big snake can wrap and and you know try to eat a big rat, it's it's kind of a battle between the rat and the snake. And I used to feed a lot of live actually to a lot of my females until one of my albinos took a few bites on the head from that rat. And then after that, I was like, all right, no more, no more live if I can help it. So I try to do you know fresh killed or frozen thawed. And only the ones that won't eat and won't eat, I'll try uh, a smaller rat, one that I know that this snake can overpower easily. You definitely don't want to put too big of a rat, and you definitely don't want to leave it in for very long. Okay, so that wraps up my discussion of your new ball python, what you can do to feed it when it's last eaten, if you bought it from me at the Reptile Show, and when I can see you next, if you want to buy one of my ball pythons, I'll definitely be at the Repticon. I paid the money, the fee, to set up a table. I'm actually getting some new display cases, some that are a little bit bigger so I can kind of spread out my snakes, give some of my holdbacks so that I'm selling at the show a little more room to crawl around, and I hope to see you there. So thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.